Let's pray. Lord, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Almighty God, who in thy wisdom and goodness has appointed the office of rulers and parliaments for the welfare of society and the just government of men, we beseech thee to behold with thy abundant favor us thy servants whom thou hast been pleased to call to the performance of important trust in these islands. Let thy blessing descend upon us here assembled and grant that we may treat and consider all matters that shall come under our deliberation in so just and faithful a manner as to promote thy honor and glory and to advance the peace, prosperity, and welfare of these islands and of those whose interests thou hast committed to our charge. And this we beg for Jesus Christ, his sake. Amen. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Ghost be with us all evermore. Amen. Morning, members. Confirmation of minutes. Members, the minutes from March 1st have been deferred. Messages from the governor. There are none. Announcements by the speaker. Yes, we've got a couple of announcements this morning. The first is that, again, we've received notice that the Honorable Member Tiro is absent today, and we keep him in our thoughts. Also, I'd just like to acknowledge that today we will be without the services of the Deputy Clerk, Mr. Sumner. He and the member from constituency, member Pentland Gordon, are uh, in Florida along with the Auditor General and the in Director of Internal Audit. They are attending an overseas uh, oversight public finance forum that's put on for the overseas territories, and it's all part of strengthening what we do in the oversight of the Parliament, and that's being put on for the territory, so we wish that they gain much out of that. Okay. Messages from the Senate? There are none. Papers and other communications to the House? There are none. Petitions? There are none. Statements by ministers? There are none. Reports of committees? There are none. Question period? The question this morning is a written question that was carried over from Friday. Premier, do you? Uh, answer has been provided. Thank you. It was just one written question from the member Dunkley care, uh, for, to the Premier, and the answer has been provided to the member. Congratulatory and or obituary speeches. May you recognize the Honorable Member, the Minister De Silva. Minister, you thank, have the floor. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I would like the House to send condolences to uh, the family of Mr. Allen Bean. He is the, form, is the father, was the father of uh, former uh, PLP leader Mark Bean, uh, who passed. Uh, so, uh, and oh. the whole house would like yes, to be Yes, the whole house for that. Yes. So um, if we could do that, Mr. Speaker, it would be much yes. appreciated. Thank you. Thank you. Any other member wish to speak? We recognize the deputy opposition leader. I'm a member. You have the floor. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I would like to send. Congratulations to Nairobi Mills. And if you allow me, because I can't remember all the stats, but he won um, Associate Michael, Michael Weeks. If you allow me to read um, on the BMAA track meet that was held on the weekend, Saturday, he won the under-17 boys 800 meters, and he clocked in the winning time of 1 minute 57 
seconds and 93 nanoseconds mm -hmm. with the standard set of 2.03. And Nairobi Mills is the grandson of Leroy Bean, who is the gang, oh, Bishop Leroy Bean, <laughs> who is the gang resistance coordinator. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Does any other member recognize Honorable Minister Keynes? Minister, you have the floor. If it pleases you, Mr. Speaker. Yes, continue Mr. on. Mr. Speaker, I would like to ha ask that congratulations be sent to Color Sergeant Cedric Tweed. He celebrates his 94th birthday today. Uh, Mr. Speaker, Mr. Tweed served the Bermuda Regiment for 54 years. He's a former member uh, of the Bermuda Militia Artillery. He is a resident of Devonshire, and he is the brother of Kingsley Tweed, Mr. Speaker. An associate, like to extend the... Uh, the Hill House, if there's, if there's remarks. Mr. Thank you. Does any other member recognize Honorable Member Swan? Honorable Member Swan, you have the floor. Yes, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I'd like to be associated with the condolences sent to the Bean family. Yes. Mr. Uh, Leroy Allen Bean, a gentleman I grew up knowing and admiring. Um, he was a fisherman and a farmer like my grandfather, uh, who, whose boats were uh, pretty close together in, uh, in Skawa Harbor, uh, MP Weeks like to be associated uh, with that. And um, certainly uh, through our association- uh, the, whole, the whole house was associated earlier when- Yes, the but I, I certainly, yes. Uh, growing up in that, fam uh, in that community with the Bean family, um, I would like to express uh, how much we appreciated his love of, uh, of, uh, far of farming and fishing that was passed on uh, to his sons uh, who continued on uh, with that legacy and continue on uh, today. And um, I just uh, want to uh, be associated with that. Uh, on Saturday, uh, we had the, pre um, the great pleasure and privilege to be part of the Calvin Rayner Memorial Football uh, event and uh, the Honorable Premier and the Honorable Deputy Premier and MP uh, Ming and myself were, were, were there. It was a uh, very um, fitting occasion for a gentleman who actually died on Wellington Noble pl playing football well into his uh, 60s and um, is, was very much a family man and that uh, was, a, was shown in testament because of the amount of people that came out to show their love and respect for, for his legacy and uh, to show his family the type of support that they need as four years later um, his widow, who is my constituent, still uh, feels his presence every day and will do so until her dying day. Um, Mr. Speaker, thank you. Uh, and also I'd just like to uh, acknowledge young Kenny LeJour, Jr. in Florida. Uh, one of my young charges who's now under the stables of one of the greatest uh, teachers on the planet continues to do well overseas and uh, we wish him well. He uh, placed high and he won a tournament in Florida recently uh, representing the Gary Gilchrist Golf Academy and uh, he's an example of uh, how our, our talent uh, is encouraged to go away and can excel when provided with the right uh, tools uh, and equipment to uh, better themselves. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, Honorable Member. Does any other member wish to speak? You recognize Premier? Premier, you have the floor. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, this morning, uh, though I was associated uh, uh, formally uh, by the Honorable Minister for Tourism, I would just like to make sure that I am on record of expressing uh, the notes of condolences uh, to the family of the late Leroy Allen Bean. Um, uh, many people do not, may not know that uh, Mr. Bean was a very devout uh, Christian and him and my uh, mother uh, had a very great relationship uh, as uh, they were prayer warriors and my mom uh, was the one who actually informed me yesterday morning so I wanted to make sure that I uh, noted that condolence. In addition to that I would like to be um, associated with remarks uh, from the Honorable Member for Constituency Number 2 um, as I was honored to be asked to present the trophy um, at the Calvin C.O. Rayner Memorial. Um, Minister. Event this past <laughs> uh, Saturday. Um, it seems as though if, Mr. Speaker, and I, I make a habit of uh, trying my best not to uh, get to St. George's too often, because when you get there, they keep you there. And it's so much fun that you almost don't want to leave. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> it was only but just like the premier left the cup will leave as well <laughs> But Continue, it, Premier. It, it was it was a lovely event. You could certainly see uh, the spirit that was uh, there. Uh, rem remembering, it's an annual event, of course, and now it's an annual event that is remembering someone who um, passed away during that annual event. But it was mm -hmm. certainly um, a poignant moment. I was just honored to be asked to present the trophy um, and to be a part of what is certainly a tradition up there in the East End. And finally, I would like to. Uh, be associated with the uh, remarks uh, that were given by the Honorable Member for Constituency Number 30 uh, to uh, Mr. Nairobi smith -Vills, uh, I'm sorry, uh, who, uh, had, um, who had set the standard um, at, and qualified for the Crypto Games uh, this weekend with a uh, scorching time, Mr. Speaker. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yes. Any other member? We recognize Honorable Member Ms. Farbert. Ms. Farbert, you have the floor. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I would also like to send condolences out to the family of Shannon Davis, who tragically yes. lost his life. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> I'd like to associate um, MP Jackson, the whole house. Um, Shannon tra tragically lost his life um, on the roads um, on Friday evening. He is a constituent of mine, leaves behind uh, his wife and and young children. Mm -hmm. So to the family of Shannon James, who is our second row fatality of the year, um, just like to send Seven da sorry, Davis, Shannon Davis, 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 Davis. I said Davis initially, my apologies. Yes, no problem. To the family of Shannon Davis, um, condolences. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Is there any other? Thank you, ma'am. Any other member wish to speak? No other? We recognize the Honorable Member from Constituency 36. Honorable Member Scott, you have the floor. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, uh, this is a note uh, of, and request of the House that we send condolences in relation to the family of young Javon Gardner. Mm -hmm. Mr. Gardner um, is the son of Mr. Ernest Can. Um, he uh, wished to associate Mr. Premier. Mm -hmm. Javon and I formed a relationship. Uh, I acted for him. He called me uh, dad very often, sort of had this relationship of surrogate. And, sh and uh, Javon visited me two or three days ago. He was uh, uh, visiting and asking for uh, me to give him some ha help trying to locate him an apartment. It turns out this was his final visit to me mm -hmm. to say goodbye. Mm -hmm. I realized that. Um, I was shocked when you asked me, uh, Mr. Speaker yourself, mm -hmm. did I know that um, I'm Ernest's son had passed, yes. and um, I hadn't made the connection. Mm -hmm. So to Ernest and to his mother, Mrs. G Ms. Gardner, uh, I wish to ask that this house send sincere condolences on the loss of no, this young life. Colonel Birch would like to, yeah. uh, would be interested to know that he spent some time, Colonel, in, um, as a works and engineering uh, electrician yes. and worked in your department. Thank you, Mr. Mm -hmm. Speaker. Thank you. There's any other member who wish to speak? No other member? We can move on. Matters of privilege. There are none. Personal explanation. There are none. Notice of motions for the adjournment of the House on matters of urgent public importance. There are none. Introduction of bills. There are none. Private members' bills. There are none. Notices, notice of motions. I believe we have a notice of motion to be put this morning. Mr. Premier. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I give notice that I propose to move the following motion at the next day of meeting. Whereas the House of Commons Foreign Affairs Committee has issued a report on the United Kingdom and its overseas territories, and whereas this report represents an attempt to erode the constitutional rights of Bermudians and is a retrograde approach to relationships between the United Kingdom and Bermuda, be it resolved that this Honorable House rejects the unwarranted and unjustified attempt at intervention into Bermuda's domestic affairs and calls the UK government to reject the report and its rec retrograde recommendations with respect to Bermuda and the overseas territories. Thank you. Premier, it's noted and will be on the order paper. Orders of the day. And now brings us to the orders of the day, and I'd like to call on the Minister of Finance. Good morning, Mr. Speaker. Good morning. Mr. Speaker, I move that the House do now resume in Committee of Supply to consider the estimates of revenue and expenditure for 2019-2020. Thank you. And for the listening audience, as you know, today is the start of the individual budget heads that will be, uh, ministry heads that will be debated. And the first item up this morning is in the name of the Ministry of Tourism. 
So before we go to that, we will ask the chair, and I believe the chairman for this morning's session is Honorable Member Swan. Honorable Member, will you come and take the chair, and we can proceed with the business of the day. Good morning, members. Uh, we're here um, to uh, consider the um, Head 48 under the Ministry of uh, Tourism and uh, Transport. And I believe Minister Zane De Silva, Honorable Member. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, I move the following Head 48, Ministry of Tourism and Transport Headquarters. Be now taken under consideration. Proceed. Mr. Chairman, today I'm presenting the budget for the Ministry of Tourism and Transport Headquarters, Head 48. The budget appropriation for the entire ministry totals $88,496,079, as found on page B194 of the estimates of revenue and expenditure for the year 1920, 2019-20. The departments which come under the ministry include Ministry Headquarters, Head 48, Marine and Port Services, Head 30, Transport Control, Head 34, and Public Transportation, Head 35. In addition, the Ministry of Tourism and Transport maintains oversight of the Bermuda Civil Aviation Authority, Bermuda Shipping and Maritime Authority, Bermuda Airport Authority, and the Bermuda Tourism Authority. Yes. Mr. Chairman, it is the Ministry Headquarters which is responsible for tourism matters. Ministry Headquarters Head 48, Course Center 5800, found on pages B195 through B198 of the Estimates of Revenue and Expenditure for the year 2019-2020. Mission, to develop effective transportation policy and provide transportation systems that meet the need of Bermuda's residents and visitors to provide oversight and financial support to the Bermuda Tourism Authority and the Bermuda Airport Authority and guidance to authorities with responsibility for civil aviation and maritime affairs. Mr. Chairman, the Ministry of Tourism and Transport Headquarters, Head 48, includes three business units, an administration section, the transportation planning team, and the regulatory and policy hotel administration section. Expenditure overview. Mr. Chairman, the total current expenditure for the Ministry of Tourism and Transport Headquarters, Head 48, is estimated to be $39,475,159 for the fiscal year 2019-2020. This represents an increase of $25,080,606, or 174% over the prior year's budget of $14,479,553. This increase is due to the November 2018 ministerial re reorganization that returned the responsibilities for tourism to the ministry, resulting in the addition of the Bermuda Tourism Authority and related grants. The reorganization also saw the departure from the Ministry of Responsibility for the Department of Energy, which included oversight of broadcasting, telecommunications, and the Bermuda Regulatory Authority, and its associated budget of $783,169. The headquarters budget includes funding for three business units mentioned previously, as well as the current account operational expenditure grants 
and contributions as seen in the Ministry of Tourism and Transport Headquarters, subjective analysis of current account estimates, grants and contributions, budget line located on page B196 and Schedule 1, grants and contributions on C18 of the budget book, which is inclusive of the Bermuda Airport Authority grant in the amount of 13300000 and the Bermuda Tourism Authority grant in the amount of 22500000 For the fiscal year 2019-20, the Ministry Headquarters' budget also includes grants and contributions for entities such as the World Triathlon Series in the amount of $2,070,470, which is year three of a five-year commitment, and JetBlue in the amount of $60,000, which is year three of a three-year cooperative marketing agreement. Administration Head 48, Course Center 58000. Mr. Chairman, the administration section within the Ministry of Tourism and Transport Headquarters, Core Center 58000, will have a budget of $38,960,785. The majority of this allocation comprises the two authorities' grants, about which I will provide more information later in this brief. For now, I will move on to the transportation planning team. Mr. Chairman, the transportation planning team within the Ministry of Tourism and Transport Headquarters, Core Center 58010, is allocated a budget of $140,660 and can be found on page B195 of the budget book. The transportation planning team oversees cruise ship operational, regulatory, and legislative matters. Together with the Bermuda Tourism Authority, the transport planning section sets the cruise ship strategy, which has a, long, a strong focus on increasing cruise ship passenger spending and attracting a mix of cruise brands that can visit the Royal Navy Dockyard, as well as the city of Hamilton and the town of St. George. Mr. Chairman, the transportation planning team spearheads the logistical support for various government departments, on-island stakeholders, hoteliers, and cruise ship partners, to ensure the efficient integration of transportation services to meet the expectations in Bermuda. Planning initiatives for the year include, but are not limited to, the following. One, meeting regularly with transport operators to plan for the 2019 season. Two, stakeholder consultation and communication regarding the cruise ship schedule and high impact areas, such as ground transportation and services required during one day and weekend cruise ship calls. Three, implementing a revised plan for traffic coordination of taxis, minibuses, public buses at Horseshoe Bay, where over 5,000 vis visitors can be found on any given day during the cruise ship season, to be executed by the Department of Parks with TCD traffic office officers assisting when necessary. Four, identifying the correct number of minibuses to meet resident and visitor demand, particularly for those persons with special needs requiring heavy wheelchair accessible transport options. Five, working with the Department of Parks to increase the presence of lifeguards earlier and later in the season, especially at Horseshoe Beach. Six, working with the Department of Works and Engineering to arrange much needed shading at the Horseshoe Bay Beach General Transportation Area for visitors <clears throat> and transport operators. Seven, working with the Department of Marine and Port Services to identify and implement supplemental ferry service to accommodate an extended cruise ship season and, increase, and an increase in cruise ship passenger arrivals and with the Department of Public Transportation to organize ground support staff to help with passenger queuing and pass validation in the Royal Navy Dockyard. Eight, ensuring that the Bermuda Visitor Services Centers and Dockyard are open when a cruise ship arrives alongside. Nine, <clears throat> champion the need for public transportation services to implement a digital fare media system alongside a public transportation trip planning app with real-time information on the status of buses and ferries in time for the 2020 cruise ship season. And finally, number 10, advocating for bow loading capabilities for public ferries 
at Hunter's Wharf in St. George by 2020 so that persons who use wheelchairs can travel to and from Dockyard to St. George by ferry. Mr. Chairman, I would also like to update you now on the cruise ship activity. In 2018, Bermuda received 171 cruise ship calls, bringing 484,339 passengers to our shores. In 2019, 194 cruise ship calls are expected, with an estimated 545,000 cruise ship passengers. This represents an increase of 23 calls and approximately 60,000 passengers compared with 2018. Mr. Chairman, cruise ship passenger on-island spending is also expected to increase significantly in 2019 to $123 million, an increase of $12,900,000 over the $110,100,000 spent by cruise ship passengers in 2018. The Government of Bermuda is also expecting an increase in cruise ship tax revenue of $24,100,000 in 2018 to $32,300,000 in 2019. This increase, a portion of which will go to the Bermuda Tourism Authority, with the remainder destined for the consolidated fund, is attributed to restructuring of the cruise ship and cruise ship passenger taxes, which have not been uplifted in almost 13 years. Cruise ship and cruise ship passenger taxes in effect from April 1, 2019. Cabin tax will be repealed. Passenger departure tax will remain the same for ships berthing in or at anchor and tendering to the town of St. George and the city of Hamilton $20 per person per 24-hour period or any part thereof to a maximum of $60. There will be an increase of $5 to $25 per person for passenger departure tax for each 24-hour period or any part thereof to a maximum of $75 per person per call for ships berthing in dockyard or at anchor and tendering to dockyard. We will introduce a $22 per person tax called the Large Ship Infrastructure Tax for passengers sailing on vessels with gross tonnage exceeding 149,000 tons or exceeding 1,120 feet in length or exceeding 4,000 passengers, whichever is applicable. There are two ships identified in the 2019 cruise ship schedule that fit this criteria. They are the Royal Caribbean's Anthem of the Seas and the Norwegian Cruise Line's Norwegian Escape. The large ship infrastructure tax revenue will be used to help fund infrastructure improvements. There will be a new cruise ship passenger fee of $16 per person to fund destination marketing and on-island product and experience development by the Bermuda Tourism Authority. This fee will be paid directly to the BTA, and as a result, the government will be able to re reduce its annual grant to the authority. Simply stated, Mr. Chairman, the cabin tax of $14 per cabin per day is replaced with the flat fee of $16 per person for the new BTA cruise ship passenger fee. Government's passenger departure tax increases $5 per person per 24 hours for ships berthing in dockyard. And for the passengers traveling on the larger ships, an additional tax of $22 per person is being levied to help fund cruise ship infrastructure projects. Mr. Chairman, government taxes from cruise ship passengers and the BTA cruise passenger fee combined will generate an estimated $40,200,000 in revenue between April 1st and the 31st of October, 2019. This is an estimated increase of $16 million in taxes and fees over the 2018 cabin tax and passenger departure tax revenue. The cruise ship strategy to extend the cruise ship season and incentivize cruise ship calls to Bermuda in the peak off-peak season will remain. Therefore, neither the government taxes nor the BTA cruise passenger fee will be charged between November 1st and the 31st of March. Mr. Chairman, it will come as no surprise that the cruise lines really do enjoy calling into Bermuda and, the, and that Bermuda remains a profitable destination for one, two, and three-day calls. 
the transport planning and BTA teams have been tracking the economic value of the cruise ship business to Bermuda more closely in recent years. With an increased emphasis on onboard activities, it is documented that the Bermuda vendors have suffered as a result. However, the cruise ship passengers do add vibrancy to all ports and contribute an average spend of $227 per person per visit on transportation, meals, retail shopping, and tours. The best retail months are reported to be May, June, July, and early August, when younger cruise passengers travel with their families. Mr. Chairman, I would like to share with you what cruise business actually means to Bermuda. We have estimated that $178,700,000 will be circulating in Bermuda's economy by the end of the 2019 cruise ship season. This includes passenger spending of $110 million, cruise spending of $5.5 million, government taxes of $31.8 million, and BTA passenger fee of $7.82 million, and the cruise line disbursement expenses, $10 million, paid to on island vendors via the cruise line's port agent during each call. Mr. Chairman, the season for contracted cruise ships starts on Sunday, 14th of April, with regular calls running through Sunday, the 17th of November. It includes the grandeur of the seas with 18 calls, the anthem of the seas with 24 calls, the Norwegian escape with 27 calls, the Norwegian gem, which replaces the Norwegian dawn with 22 calls, and the celebrity summit with 17 calls. In addition, Mr. Chairman, Norwegian's re Regent Seven Seas and the Oceana brand ships will continue to make 12 contract calls to St. George's between Friday, the 5th of April, and Monday, the 18th of November. The city of Hamilton will receive 15 calls between the 5th of April and the 24th of December in 2019. Carnival cruise ships will make 20 occasional calls, which is an increase of seven calls in 2019. The Disney Magic will return with five occasional calls between 27th of September and the 25th of October. Two Holland America cruise, ship line, uh, cruise line ships will visit Bermuda this year. They are the, the Zuendam and the Rotterdam. Bermuda will also host five inaugural cruise ship calls in 2019. MS NCL Pearl, April 20th to 21st. MS NCL Jade, April 25th to 26th. MS Celebrity Edge, April 30th and May 1st. MS Adventure of the Seas, May 19th. And MS Spirit of Discovery, December 31st and January 1st. Mr. Chairman, the Transportation Planning Team has identified 11 dates when Bermuda will experience a significant number of cruise ship passengers in port at the same time. These dates have been highlighted with industry stakeholder as peak transport challenge days and early preparation is underway. The cruise ship schedule can be downloaded from the Marine and Ports website at www.marineandports.bm. It is updated regularly. Mr. Chairman, the third business unit in the headquarters, Head 48, is Regulatory and Policy Hotel Administration. The Regulatory and Policy Hotel Administration Unit with the Ministry of Tourism and Transport Headquarters, Core Center 58020, has been allocated a budget of $373,714, as found on page B195 of the Estimates of Revenue and Expenditures. The variance between 1920, between 2019 and 2020 budget and revised budget of 2018 and 2019 is no. As noted earlier, this section was transferred to the Ministry of Tourism and Transport from the former Ministry of Economic Development and Tourism in November last year. Mr. Chairman, the unit is responsible for the inspection and licensing of properties listed on the hotel inventory. As of 1st of May 2018, there were 41 operating licensed properties, including four large resort hotels, 10 small hotels, four cottage colonies, three clubs, seven large cottages, suites and apartments, 
six small cottages, suites and apartments, two inns, four bed and breakfasts, not to be confused with Airbnb, and one floatel, a boat used as a hotel. The unit jointly administers the new Vacation Rentals Act 2018 with Consumer Affairs in conjunction with the Ministry of Home Affairs. Unlike the process of inspecting and licensing properties listed on the hotel inventory, vacation rental proprietors are required to complete a self-check application form before being issued a vacation rental certificate or a vacation rental rent control certificate. Mr. Chairman, the Vacation Rentals Act 2018 amended the definition of a hotel per Section 1 of the Hotels Licensing and Control Act 1969 to mean a place provides sleeping accommodation for 10 or more guests, increase from 6 or more guests. As such, a vacation rental unit is one that provides sleeping accommodations for 9 or fewer guests. Those proprietors are required to register and secure a vacation rental certificate issued by either the Minister Responsible for Tourism or the Minister Responsible for Rent Control. Recent research unveiled that there are at least 662 properties posted on various platforms as vacation rental properties, including, but not limited to, Airbnb, Bermuda Rentals, and Vacation Rentals by owner. These properties offer sleeping accommodations to nine or fewer guests. Our research also unveiled that there are 44 properties posted on various platforms which can provide accommodation for 10 or more guests and which are not on our hotel inventory list. The reg regulatory and policy unit is addressing the compliance issue, meeting with each prop property owner individually, and expects these properties to be listed as hotels by the end of the upcoming fiscal year. Mr. Chairman, the unit is also responsible for the administration of the Lotteries Act 1944 on behalf of the Secretary to the Cabinet. So far, in the current fin financial year, 42 raffle permits and 24 business permits have been issued under this Act. Mr. Chairman, the Regulatory and Policy Unit also administers the Tourism Investment Act 2017, the successor to the hotel Hotels Concession Act 2000, which became operative on November 10, 2017. The Tourism in Investment Act 2017 revoked 14 inactive or spent hotels concession orders, leaving eight active hotel concession orders in place. Mr. Chairman, the, Tour the Tourism Investment Act 2017 provides relief, depending on the level of investment in the property, as follows. For a new hotel for a period not exceeding 10 years, a refurbished hotel for a period not exceeding five years, a new restaurant for a period not exceeding three years, an existing restaurant for a period of one year, and an attraction for a period of one year. Honorable members will recall the very first tourism investment order was recently approved by this house for, for the Bermudiana Beach Resort. Manpower. Mr. Chairman, the Ministry of Tourism and Transport Headquarters employs nine full-time equivalent employees under the following core centers. 58000, four persons, the Permanent Secretary, the Ministry Comptroller, an Accountant Administrative Officer, and an ex Executive Assistant. 58010, one Transportation Coordinator, and 58020, four persons, the Senior Manager for Tourism Regulation and Policy, two compliance officers, and an administrative assistant. Compensation, not including overtime, is, is estimated at $939,139, or 0.02% of the budget. Revenue. It is anticipated that in 2019-2020, the Ministry Headquarters will generate approximately $16,653,000 in revenue from the following sources. Bermuda Civil Aviation Authority, $16 million. Cruise ship casino licenses, $615,000. Hotel license fees, 38000 
This revenue estimate represents a decrease of approximately 55%, again primarily the result of the November 2018 ministerial alignment, which shifted the revenue attained from the regulatory authority of Bermuda, approximately 17950400 to the Ministry of Home Affairs. Also contributing to the decrease in the estimated revenue at the Ministry Headquarters is the decline in revenue receipts from the Bermuda Civil A Aviation Authority, BCAA, estimated to be $16 million in 2019-2020. The decline represents 19% decrease over the prior year's revenue estimate of $19,850,000. The decline in revenue is attributed to two changes put in place if effective April 1st, 2018. First, the BCAA changed its revenue rec recognition policy to defer revenue for certificates of airworthiness, continuing aircraft management organization certificates, and airport maintenance organization certificates, which are generally issued 60 to 90 days before their date of validity. Second, BCAA effected an internal change in accounting practice to improve the accuracy of the calculation of deferred revenue for these certificates. These changes will better reflect the actual revenues earned in each period without the need for cumbersome revenue deferral calculations and will ensure airworthiness revenue recognition is consistent. Mr. Chairman, I would now like to discuss the year ahead with respect to two authorities which receive grants from the public press, starting first with the Bermuda Tourism Authority. Mr. Chairman, the Bermuda Tourism Authority, commonly known as BTA, was established with a mission not only to promote Bermuda as a destination, but also to be a catalyst of economic development and to ensure the social and economic enhancement of Bermuda through the expansion of tourism. Mr. Chairman, in 2018, following hundreds of stakeholder interviews, working groups, and public input, the National Tourism Plan was released. The objective of the National Tourism Plan is to build a multi-year roadmap for our aspirational future for tourism and its effect on the island as a whole. The vision of Bermuda having a growing and balanced tourism business by 2025 is underpinned by the opportunities within the seven strategic pillars of the plan. The National Tourism Plan strategic pillars are as follows. Awareness and relevance to be seen as an alluring destination set apart not only by our ge geographic location, but also our way of life. Greener, to become one of the greenest tourism destinations and attract visitors who value this through more eco-friendly practices and better use of our natural resources. Infrastructure, to offer frictionless experiences from arrival through departure in a way that not only satisfies visitors, but adds to their positive experience of the country. Local involvement, to tap the vast creative and entrepreneurial potential and hospitality of local residents for the mutual benefit for both visitors and residents alike. Innovation, to have a visitor-centric approach and use technology and data to enhance visitor experiences. Teams and groups, to be known as an exclusive, convenient, and sought-after destination for specific groups, especially in the non-summer months. Year-round, to offer an attractive value proposition for visitors to come any time of the year. It is purposeful that these strategic, these strategic pillars spell agility. We must be focused, passionate, and agile to build on recent growth. The BTA will work with its partners and stakeholders in order to achieve the aims of the National Tourism Plan. Mr. Chairman, the introduction of the new vac vacation rental property fee in 2018 and the proposed cruise ship passenger fee announced in the budget, both payable to the BTA, has enabled the government to reduce the grant to the BTA from $26 million in 2018-19 to $22,500,000 in 2019-20 without compromising the ability of the BTA to deliver on its objectives. The current account expect expenditure can be seen in the Ministry of Tourism and Transport Headquarters subjective analysis of current account estimates, grants and contributions, 
budget line located on page B196 and C18 of the budget book. The BTA will continue with a successful strategy of investing the funds available in integrated marketing campaigns designed to generate in year demand for Bermuda as a destination. The majority of the investment will be concentrated in key markets and include out-of-home, television, digital marketing, and events. The BTA will also move forward with the sports strategy and seek opportunities for marketing partnerships with a high return on investment to bring major events to the island. Mr. Chairman, in 2018-19, the BTA received funding to ensure that Bermudians are ready and willing for the employment opportunities coming to the island's tourism sector with two five-star hotels scheduled to open next year. This initiative, in partnership with the Department of Workforce Development and Bermuda's Hoteliers, is now in process. It will deliver a thorough future needs assessment and gap analysis across skilled, unskilled, and management employment in our hotels and provide a pathway to prepare Bermudians to seize those opportunities. Mr. Chairman, tourism represents Bermuda's best opportunity to create, to create inclusive economic growth that benefits Bermudian homeowners, workers, and entrepreneurs. The BTA is proud of its track record of success over the last three years and is, to com and is committed to further growth of the tourism economy. Moving on to the Bermuda Airport Authority. Mr. Chairman, the second authority which receives a grant from the government is the Bermuda Airport Authority. The Bermuda Airport Authority is nearing the end of its second year as a Krango under the Ministry of Tourism and Transport. The current account expenditure can be seen in the Ministry of Tourism and Transport Headquarters subjective analysis of current account estimates, grants and contributions, budget line located on page B196 and C18 of the budget book. Mr. Chairman, the Bermuda Airport Authority delivers a range of essential air navigation services also known as retained government services at the L.F. Wade International Airport, including air traffic control, ground electrics, Bermuda weather, and aeronautical information services. As the owner of the airport, on behalf of the government of Bermuda, the authority also oversees the performance of the airport developer, Bermuda Skyport Corporation, and its 30-year concession to operate, maintain, and redevelop the new airport scheduled for completion in the summer of 2020. The airport authority also regulates airport fees and charges. Recently, the airport authority's inaugural annual report included audited financial statements for 2017-18, which was laid in the House, thus fulfilling this statutory requirement. Expenditure overview. Mr. Chairman, the total Ministry of Tourism and Transport's Operational Expenditures Grant to the Bermuda Airport Authority will be $13,300,000 for 2019-2020. It remains unchanged from the Airport Authority's Operational Expenditures Grant provided in 2018-2019. Increases in budget, budgeted finance and administration costs have been offset by a reduced airport oversight services costs as a result of the authority's strategic initiative to insource a major overseas vendor services effective April 1st, 2019. The same, mostly Bermudian, professional workforce will now provide essential air navigation services as direct employees of the airport authority, thus enjoying long-term job stability under the management of a local leadership team with high performance culture. CPI-based cost increases for salaries and benefits, insurance, and energy will be offset by operational efficiencies and reduced costs for overseas vendor management fees. Mr. Chairman, the Bermuda Airport Authority 2019-2020 capital budget of $2,500,000, as seen on page C18 of the budget book, cost center 75342, represents the same level of planned capital expenditure as 2018-2019.
the major capital cost in 2018-19, wherefore the installment payments of approximately $1,400,000 for the manufacture and installation of new equipment to replace the aging Doppler weather radio system. Major capital projects scheduled for 2019-2020 include completion of the aforementioned weather radar system installation, replacement of the airport instrument landing system, upgrading of the several airfield navigation equipment telecom telecommunication links from copper wire to fiber cable, and replacement of the air traffic control tower voice switch. Mr. Mr. Chairman, the airport authority currently employs 12 full-time equivalents headed by a Bermudian CEO who reports to a board of directors. The authority's FTE will grow to 46 in 2019-2020 when it insources the air navigation services currently provided by an overseas vendor upon expiry of their three-year service agreement. The airport authority continues to report on the performance of Bermuda Skyport Corporation in accordance with the terms of the project agreement. This includes monitoring key performance indicators such as technical design specifications, airport regulated revenues, and airport terminal energy consumption. Mr. Chairman, that concludes the brief on the Ministry of Tourism and Transport Headquarters 48. Mr. Chairman, I would like to take this opportunity to recognize the hard work and professionalism of the staff at the Ministry of Tourism and Transport Headquarters. Also, I'd like to thank the staff and boards of the airport, tourism, civil aviation, and shipping and maritime authorities who quietly go about fulfilling their mandates for the betterment of Bermuda. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Minister. It is now uh, 10.51. The Chair recognizes the Shadow Minister um, for Ministry of Tourism and Transport. Um, from constituency number 30, Honorable Member Scott, you have the floor. Thank you, Mr. Chair. <coughs> Excuse me, sorry. Mr. Chair, um, I'm going to speak to heads 58,000 and 58010. Mr. Speaker, this year represented a three-peater for the Department of Tourism, where they had three years of successful growth. And it demonstrates that tourism as an independent body does well by itself. Kevin Dallas, Glenn Jones, and the staff at the BTA have done an excellent job in being creative and in doing things that bring tourists to Bermuda and sustaining our tourism numbers. And Mr. Speaker, I'm going to ask your indulgence. I do have a lot of notes here and a lot of papers that I'd like to kind of generate um, some of my questions from. So the Tourism Authority is trying to create all kinds of experiences for Bermuda and also um, create experiences year-round so that people don't just come to Bermuda in the summertime or when the weather is warm. And they're also trying to create a Bermuda that is not their grandparents' Bermuda. And to date, they have actually been successful. I believe that the increase in uh, the number of people that are arriving in Bermuda uh, from the ages 45 and above um, has increased. So, Mr. Speaker, if you would allow me to first um, speak to the Bermuda Tourism Outlook 2019 and just a couple of things that I'd like to raise in that. Yes, um, um, Shadow Minister, if I, if I could, just for a minute, I, I want to um, inform members and the listening public that this debate is a four-hour debate. It started at 1018 this morning. And um, just recognize the senator, um, uh, Jason Sa Senator Hayward in the, in the gallery. And thank you for your attendance. And um, you may continue. Thank you, Mr. S Mr. Chair. So, Mr. Chair, looking at the uh, Bermuda Tourism Outlook, <coughs> sorry, Bermuda Tourism Outlook 2019. The air capacity 
for Bermuda from 2015 to 2018 has increased. The 29 projections have a 4% decrease. And I'd just be interested to know why those numbers are, are going down. What, on what basis do they project the decrease? Um, the strategic priorities for the BTA are the emphasis on the non-summer seasons, which I understand and appreciate, and empowering Bermudians to participate in the tourism industry. And one of the interesting things, just in going through the notes that I've read, is that, and I've actually participated in a lot of the national tourist, tourism planning sessions, and one of the things that always comes up is that Bermuda suffers from a culture of no. So we actually like to go to other places and do things and enjoy things that, that make us have a good vacation. But we don't want to have those same things in Bermuda. So we have to kind of open up our mind and broaden our mind. And I think the BTA is trying to do that in terms of bringing things to Bermuda that are not traditional but will create jobs for, for Bermudians, which is our number one thing, and also create a tourist experience so that people will want to continue to return to Bermuda. So I think that um, Bermudians getting involved and participating in tourism and actually being tourism ambassadors is a good thing. The BTA <clears throat> in their outline has set out a number of signature events um, for Bermuda and they actually sound really interesting. There's going to be a, they've got the Bermuda Triangle of Sailing. They've got the Marion Bermuda Race, the Atlantic Rally for Cruisers, the Bermuda Triple Crown Billfish Tournament. And I'd like to know what a billfish is because I've never heard of it. <laughs> um, the Gum Bay Festival, Festival, the National Trust talk about. But they have, you know, a bunch of things that are going on. And, you know, one of the things that I would like for Bermudians to, to do is, not just recognize that tourism is just for people that come here. There are a lot of experiences and things that are offered by the BTA that Bermudians should take advantage of. And, you know, I'm speaking to myself as well because they do offer things that I should participate in, but I don't. I was out um, the other night having dinner, and I sat beside this young woman who actually told me that she runs a food tour um, program, and I didn't even know Bermuda had food tours. And she said it's been quite successful. They go, and I participate in food tours when I travel. But she said it's been quite successful, and the people enjoy the restaurants, the interaction with the um, with the waiters and the owners of the restaurant. One thing that I would like to say is that I would like to see more Bermudians in the restaurant industry, so that people could have a true Bermudian experience. And I think that if we can get Bermudians interested in the hospitality and tourism industry as they were many years ago, it will create. Um, a better Bermudian experience. I know when I travel, I want to go where the locals go, and I want to be with the local people. I don't want to travel to, like, India and meet Japanese people serving me in the restaurant, and I'm not ma making it, say that discriminatorily, but it just adds to the experience and the genuineness of the experience when you have the people that actually live and work there. So the Tourism Authority is also looking at um, doing some culture, arts and culture events, some of them I've been to, the Fashion Festival, the Art Walk, Gum Bay Saturdays. So they have, a, and in their um, strategic action plan, they have a plethora of ideas that I think will be very attractive to people who want to come to Bermuda and participate. I note that the Visitor Service Center should be opening up in April. I'd like to know whether or not we're on track for that to, to open up. I've been watching the development of that building down on Front Street. And... Um, Mr. Speaker, the other day I went on the BTA's website and found that they have, if I can read from it, 21 free or affordable things to do in Bermuda. And these are things that I didn't even know they had. The Thank you. 21 free or affordable things to do in Bermuda from the BDA website, BTA website, things to do on our island. So there's a scurling ceremony at Fort Hamilton. Did you know they had a scurling ceremony? Do you know what a scurling ceremony is? Enlighten me, Minna. Shall well, we the scurling ceremony is where they have kilted pipers, drummers, and dancers perform to the bag time scurl of the Bermuda Islands Pipe Band. I didn't even know that. And that's every Monday through the 31st of March at 12 o'clock. I didn't even know they had that. You can visit the unfinished church. There's the the tour of the perfume factory, Bermuda Gum Bay Review, Bird Watch at Spittle Pond. 
hiking up to Fort Scour in God's country, the home of the cup. And um, you can also... It could be a point of order, but continue on. <laughs> <laughs> there's the Featherbed Alley print shop, and you, there's a place where you can go and at the Rock Island Coffee, you can sip locally roasted coffee. So there's a lot of things that people can do when they come to Bermuda. And I'm actually proud of Bermuda and, and the things that the BTA has actually accomplished. Finally, what before I get into the numbers, Mr. Speaker, and the National Tourism Plan. So they've identified things that they'd like to do and, and areas that we need to focus on, excuse me, as a, as a country. So their executive summary sets out some of the challenges, and some of the challenges, and again, I, I spoke to this earlier, the key challenges that most people have are reducing the effects of seasonality, so it's actually enjoying Bermuda no matter what season it is, um, regulation, and then the negative mindset, the culture of no. So we've got to be able to be accepting of change and be accepting of things that are going to make Bermuda a jurisdiction that people want to come to and the cost of doing business and taxes. So how do, we make, how do we balance the cost of doing business here and having a pleasant experience with, um, with taxes and things like that? Now, the shareholder, uh, shareholder, from a shareholder perspective, Bermuda shopping experience is people want to see more Bermudian things in their stores. Some Shadow. people don't come to Bermuda to shop. I know when I travel, I go Shadow to shop. Minister, can you uh, just tie it into the to the line items. Oh, yeah, yes. sorry, yeah. Just, sorry, just, sorry. Just, just so keep going. if you have people that are, if you're pro producing more Bermuda items and people are shopping, then that money is going to go to our revenue, to our bottom line. And Oh, I don't want to talk about that one. Okay, so Mr. Speaker, going back to um, head under 480158,000. You're on head 48, yeah? Head 48, 58,000 administration. So. Um, okay, in 2017, Mr. Speaker. Chairman. Chairman, sorry, I keep calling you Speaker. There was a payment made of $100,000 to the Bermuda Sailing Trading Association for the tall ships regatta. And I know that the tall ships aren't coming, but is there, what happened to that $100,000 allocation? Has that money been allocated to do something else? Um, in 2018, it was anticipated that our Spending will go up to fifty-nine thousand eight hundred for um, cruise tax revenue. Cruise tax revenue dollars. Have we seen a Have we seen that increase Speaker, in? If you don't mind, is it, is it Mr. Point Jackson? of order. Well, I just wonder what line item are you talking from? Because I like to follow. Um, yeah, I believe it was on uh, five eight. We're on page B one ninety five five eight zero one administration. Um, the um, shadow, shadow Minister uh, said she was dealing with 58000 administration. All right. Yes. Continue on. Okay. Um, the plan and the tourism plan plan to increase arrivals, visitor arrivals in Bermuda to 40, 428,000 by the year 2022. And in five years, in, in 2018, we're five years before that goal date. Does that number, is that number still anticipated? Do we still think that we're going to be able to make that? And I say that just in looking at we've had a decrease in, we're looking at a decrease for 2019 for air arrivals. The Disney, the Disney Magic cruise ship came here five times this year. Did we see an increase in our revenue because it was anticipated when those, when those boats called here that those are people that actually were spending money and would spend money? So, did they add any rev any increase to our revenue? The Norwegian breakaway was replaced with the Norwegian escape, and that 
that ship had a capacity for 500 more visitors. Did those 500 more visitors actually spend more revenue in Bermuda? And if they did, what was the, what was the projected amount and what was the actual amount? Um, say, okay. In St. George's, the first cruise call, there was, it was anticipated that St. George's would have 50 cruise calls in 2018. Did they actually have 50 cruise calls in 2018? And what was the revenue that was generated from that? And Mr. Chair, it's hard to, um, I'm gonna go down to 58010, the transportation planning team. And the transportation, the last transportation management report was in 2002. And that report actually highlighted some things from a public survey about, that was taken from the Bermuda public. And so I'm gonna ask whether these things are still relevant. And if you'd allow me to read, please, from the Hansard of 2nd of March, 2018. Mr. Speaker, with all due respect, we're doing Jim. the budget debate, right? And you got to, you, when you want to talk from item, you got to lay out the line number, the head, and everything else. You're doing reports. Oh, that should have been in general debate. You got to, we're dealing with the Mr. budget, revenue, Mr. and expenses. Mr. 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 Deputy uh, Chairman, I, I have been following the, uh, the member um, as uh, she had spoken to matters that they were, are in the, in the brief, which the minister uh, quite rightly, uh, well, um, we appreciate him sharing. I didn't have a, a, a problem with uh, the questions that she was asking. They were relevant to what was presented by the minister, uh, and I was able to follow. In fact, I actually turned to page 11, and she was making reference to questions related to the cruise ships, which were there. Um, but um, I'm, I'm glad. Member, if you can um, keep your uh, rhetorical uh, succinct as you as you relate to the minister. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. So, uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Chair, it's a kind of a difficult. Last year, tourism and transport were con contained in the same ministry, and so one of the things that I'd like to know, and I, and I'm, I'm may have to wait until Friday when we do the transport debate, is as we are trying to increase our tourism revenue and trying to increase our airlift numbers and the people that are contributing to our economy, we have to make sure that our transportation system is working. So I'd like to know what the transport management team is doing in terms of working out how we can increase. Well, you might have to save that one for, for, for that live. Yeah, live. Friday. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. no problem. I think you answered your own question. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and Mr. Speaker, this, I guess I may have to wait for, for Friday on this one because I was talking to, going to talk about the modernization of a cashless payment system, which they were going to be looking at, and I want to know the status of that, but that would fall under transport as well, I would yeah. imagine. Yeah. Okay. We've got enough uh, heads here as we, as we deal with tourism and, uh, and the authorities that come under uh, those particular heads. Right, okay. And so, some of them are just uh, line items, so uh, if you can keep it specific uh, uh, to that, uh, okay. we'll, we'll appreciate it. So I'll go back to 58,000 under administration. And last year's budget, there was a funding of 400,000 that was ring fenced for an initiative for Bermudians, and that was going to be in partnership with the hospitality industry. And I'd like to know if further funds will be allocated for that and, and how that project worked for, for 2018. Um, there was $100,000 that was allocated for the BTA's beach economy vision. Is money going to be allocated for that? What is happening with the beach economy vision? Is there going to be um, anything that's going to be going on with that? Mr. Speaker, uh, Mr. sorry, Mr. Chair, the BTA received um, $7.9 million in direct income last year, and I'd like to know what they've received this year in terms of direct income. Mr. 
Mr. Chair, last year there was a under, again, Head 4801, 58,000 administration. There was a $37,000 increase in professional services, and there was money set aside for the Bermuda Event Authority. Has money been set aside again for the Bermuda Event Authority? And if it has been, what is it? Because I don't see it listed in the, um, in the grant section. Professional services, you're relating to B196? Yes. In the subjective analysis? Yes. Okay. And then under administration, 4801, 58,000 administration, there was a $39,000 increase in travel fees for 2018. What was the amount of travel fees for this year and what has been, ha been allocated for that? Mr. Chair, in 2018, a million dollars, well, 2017, 2018, there was a million dollars allocated to America's Cup for sponsorship. And that money was supposed to be diverted in 2018 for integrated marketing campaign, campaigns or marketing blitzes. Is money going to be allocated for that, and what will those campaigns entail? The other thing is that... Is that on the grants and contributions? I'm just trying to, um, you know, just so that we can follow where you're getting your you refer your numbers to? I'm referring it to my brief from 2018. Okay. Yeah. It, it'll be helpful as you relate to numbers if you could, uh, you know, keep us uh, on track oh, as okay. to where your, where your numbers are coming from so honorable members can because I'm can thoroughly follow. confusing you. No, just uh, I just want to uh, make it relevant to the budget book that we're debating. Okay. And I'm sure the numbers that you refer to would be in there. Sh should be here, right? And so that we can uh, cross reference. Uh, okay. C18, C18 um, member, has grants and contributions for right. uh, the Ministry of Transport and Tourism. So if there but are I numbers that you're going to refer to that would have been listed in the budget either this year, if you cross-reference it, they should be listed uh, in here. If you could just make reference to... to, to, to okay, so yeah. what I don't see is a, is yeah. a, a number for um, the Bermuda Event Authority. So... It, yeah, you could ask that of the minister. Okay. So I'm asking whether or not there, if because it's not in here, does it necessarily mean that there's not going to be a grant allocated for it at some point? You didn't, I know. Okay. Um, Continue. For the list in public, we're on head 48, tourism and, and transport. It's four hours allocated for this head on the ministry headquarters. We're on B195 and um, grants and contributions are listed on C18. Um, Shadow Minister from constituency number 30, you have the floor. Okay, thank you. So, um, Mr. Speaker, Mr. Chair, on page B196 on the grants and contributions. Last year there was a grant to the Bermuda Hospitality Institute, and because grants and contributions is an aggregate number, will they 
be receiving a grant this year. The Visitor Services Center has also got a grant under last year. Is that con included in this aggregate number? The National Trading Standard Program and Certified Tourism Ambassador Program also got a grant. Is that included in this aggregate number? Continue on. I'm just looking for I'm not sure whether this would come under communications. In the grant um, for last year, there was a commitment to strategize on previous spending to maintain the momentum of the tourism comeback. So I don't know whether that would fall under communications and what they're, because I don't or advertising and promotion. <sighs> Thank you, I have that. And I think that's, I don't have it really any further questions, Mr. Speaker, Mr. Chair. A lot of what I wanted to ask has been covered in the brief by the minister, and a lot of the other questions that I want to address will come under the transportation head on Friday. Um, I don't know what, I have some questions, but I'm not, I'm, I'm not sure Okay, uh, this will come under, tra if it will come under training. There was a, there is a certified waiter server program. I'd like to know what the status of that is and is that included in the training budget? The tourism ambassador. M Mr. Speaker, you know. Yeah, point if, of if I may. Just um, one moment. Yeah. See, yes. You got to, you got to lay out the line, what head you're talking about, what line item you're talking about. I like to follow this here, right? Yeah. And I'm finding it very difficult to follow if okay. you don't specify what you're talking about. Thank you. Um, can you just specify, thank you, Honorable Member, can you specify the uh, line item that you're referring, uh, that you're referring uh, to? Okay, so page B196. Yes. Under training. The line item is training. In the, subject, in the subjective analysis. Yes. Training, yes, and third so line. I'm not, Mike, I'm not sure whether these would come under training, but there was a certified waiter service program in 2018, do they still have that program? And is that, if there is that program, is that number included in the training budget? There was, a, and again, page B196, again under training, there was a yes. tourist, the tourism ambassador program. We had tourism ambassadors of 400 people. Does that, is that program still existing? Is money being allocated for that? Again, under, I'm not sure what this would come under. Last year, they had the Neighborhood Beautification Project. Would that, I'm not sure exactly what that would come under, under the subjective analysis. And then this would, I guess, come under training. There was an internal rotation development program. Does that program still exist? Under tourism. Under, yep, yeah, under tourism. Page B196, under training. As I said, I'm not sure what specific head I mean, what specific line item that would come under? I would think that it is training. Do they have that program, and is it, is it still in existence? And what were the results of the previous program? Um, and I think that's all the questions that I have for the minister under this, Mr. Chair. Thank, uh -huh. And I apologize for any confusion that I've caused to the members by not... I guess, identify the items the way that they needed to be to follow. Thank you, Mr. Right. Chair. Um, th thank you, um, Shadow Minister. This debate started at 10.18. Um, uh, 
about uh, it's a four hour debate. We've uh, one hour into this debate. Um, I will share I will share one thing for clarification. Um, tourism for, for persons who speak further. Tourism and transport under head 48 is a grant uh, to the Bermuda Tourism Authority. So uh, anyone who speaks on tourism, as I've done on many years in this house, uh, know that there are no line items that are associated. So there may be questions. So uh, I uh, have exercised some latitude knowing that questions will arise that might not be covered by a line item and certainly uh, for the edification of a very important topic. Uh, I've seen some things in the, in the brief. I know those are particular uh, line items under that, under that grant, but would not be covered in this, uh, in this, in this book. But I, I appreciate uh, the Deputy Speaker put, keep me on track to be able to point those out as I'm doing so now. So I'd encourage members to relate to the line item. And if it is something that comes under tourism, that would be under the uh, BTA uh, or um, Events Authority or uh, any other authority that uh, is, is listed to make, the, to make the relevant reference so that persons uh, listening and other members uh, can uh, follow you as well. And as you relate to the um, subjective analysis on uh, relevant pages to make those reference points as well. Um, there are three hours remaining for Mr. this Chair four-hour debate. Um, Mr. Chairman, I uh, uh, just would like to clear something up. The is the allocation for four hours, but if the debate takes two hours, that's it. It doesn't have to last four hours. Thank you, uh, thank you, thank you, deputy. Thank you, that no, no, okay, members. The deputy, the, the deputy speaker, actually, uh, for for clarification, does allocate the the chairs of which I'm here, so I'm guided by uh, his, his, his reminder, and I'm, I'm, uh, I'm here to share that we have three hours remaining. Any other member care to speak to head 48 that we're on? Three-hour debate. Any other member? <coughs> Thank you, Mr. Mr. Chairman. Mr. The Chairman. chair recognizes the honorable member from constituency number 10. Yes, sir, 10. Oh, he's a 10. 10. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Chairman, to thank the Honorable Minister uh, for the brief uh, which he presented today. Just a few questions. Uh, the Honorable Minister mentioned $2 million set aside in the next financial year for the Bermuda uh, Triathlon that comes up at the end of April. Could the Honorable Minister please give some specifics on how this $2 million is going to be spent? Um, also, uh, the Honorable Minister and the Shadow Minister um, did touch on cruise ship arrivals, and I congratulate the government on continuing the trend to um, increase cruise ship arrivals, where there's a, always is a debate about the profitability and what they do for Bermuda. I think all of us in this chamber are well aware of the fact that uh, cruise ships, um, while they might not be um, as good for business as air visit arrivals, they certainly are very strong for our economy and certainly the government capitalizes on the taxes. And the minister did go to some length to talk about the change in taxes. I'd ask the honorable minister if he could um, just give a breakdown on how we arrived at those specific numbers. And if you allow me to give a little context, um, Mr. Chairman. And we're on um, tourism? We're, yeah. Which head? We're on the only head we're discussing, head 48. Thank you. Which line item? Yeah. Which line item? You can take it on uh, call center 4801 if you would like, Mr. Thank Chairman. You. Thank you. Um, but, Mr. Chairman, um, it's obvious that government's going to raise a significant amount of revenue, and I think we have the potential over the coming years to capitalize on the strength of the cruise industry, Bermuda, even though it is a shortened season because it's tough cruising the North Atlantic uh, from December to, to the end of March. Uh, but government has seen fit to um, increase taxes. Um, on them, and I'm sure that there was some back and forth with the cruise ship principles. But what I'm interested in is um, how we arrived at those numbers to make sure that they are appropriate. Uh, could they have been more or could they have been less? And I say that because Bermuda is a unique destination. There are not many jurisdictions, certainly in our nearest competition, uh, like the Caribbean. Noting, Mr. Chairman, you can cruise all over the world, but a lot of the destinations in the Caribbean um, the cruise ship companies have to anchor off and be ferried in. Um, they do have private islands where um, they do their own thing. And so I think Bermuda has 
um, in the last number of years offered value for money because our cruise ships, 99% of them come right to a dock, whether it's in St. George's, whether it's in Hamilton, or whether it's up in the west end of the island, they come right to a dock. So how did the minister and colleagues arrive at this number, these numbers to ensure um, that these are the right numbers um, for uh, the increase in taxes? Uh, another question to the Honorable uh, Minister, and I know he's got his technical team in the room today, and I want to take this opportunity to thank uh, the technical team for the support that they provide and will continue to pro provide. I heard very little in the brief about hotel investment. And my honorable colleague uh, talked about um, her liking to see Bermudians involved in the hotel industry. And I think all of us in this House of Assembly share that. And as we travel to other jurisdictions, we're very impressed by um, having locals involved in their industry. And, and we need to do a better job in Bermuda. Um, but at the same time, I believe, Mr. Chair, we need to have more hotel investment in Bermuda because airlines are very competitive. The Honorable Minister talked about um, an airline incentive, I think, for $60,000 to JetBlue in the third year of that in his brief. If we don't keep those passenger numbers high uh, throughout the season and certainly in the off season, you know, we stand the risk of losing um, uh, seat capacity coming to Bermuda. I think we need to continue to build the seat capacity in the shoulder months and in the summer months, and that will be done with more hotel investment. So I'd like to ask the Honorable Minister, uh, through the Ministry of Tourism, and I'm sure it works in conjunction with other ministries, what is the focus for the government this year in hotel investment? Are there new irons in the fire? Um, how are we making out with the current hotel investment? What's an update on Morgan's Point? Um, because clearly, I think there's opportunity. Bermuda's still the best place in the world, um, and I think there's plenty of opportunity for that. So I ask the Honorable Minister to answer those questions, and I look forward to hearing the answers, and I, I look forward to opportunity to say a few more words in this debate. Um, uh, thank you. Uh, any other member care to just, um, we're dealing with head number 48, tourism. It's a four-hour debate. Sorry, um, Mr. Chairman. I just have a question because I know my colleague was trying to get to something, and I just want to see if this is the way for us to get to it. On B197, um, head um, 58010, in yes. terms of employee numbers, full-time equivalent, for the estimates for 1920, there's an indication that there's one person that's supposed to be in the transportation planning team. And I guess that's, that's what people will be interested in from the perspective of there is someone there, and therefore um, what people would be wondering about um, what that person did because when you look at performance measures on B198, there's no reference to, to that planning team and there's no reference to performance measures. And I think you'll hear me hitting home all the time when we look at these things. Monies, performance measures, so that the public can see what they're doing and how well it's spent. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Okay, thank you. Uh, honorable member from constituency number 19. I do believe uh, any other member care to speak to head number 48, tourism and transport. No other member? Minister? <clears throat> okay, Mr. Um, speaker, I will, I'll try to um, answer a few of the questions that have been put so far. Is, um, your, mic, is your mic on? Yes. Okay. Yes. Yes, thank you. Um, to uh, for MP um, MP Scott, uh, she she didn't know. <laughs> she asked about a billfish. That's that's a pretty easy one for me, as my brother's a fisherman. It's a, it's a um, and, and, and yes, and he's <laughs> well. Some the jury's out on that one, whether or not he's a golfer. But well, he does occasionally. He, d he does uh, um, take my picture occasionally, but um, I think I take his a bit more than he takes mine. Um, but that being said, um, it's <laughs> to a long story is it's, a, it's, a, it's one of the thin fish that basically spend most of the time on top of the water, and they have a, a, a long pointed snout, as is your marlins, your sailfishes, and, and um, fish of that nature. So I, I, thought, um, I, th I thought I'd just um, point that out. Thank and I'm sure, I, I, I'm sure my brother's not listening, but if he was, he, he, I'm sure he'd appreciate that. Um, 
The, a couple of uh, questions asked. Let's see. Let's see what I have here. Let's go through my notes. Visitor service uh, grant. Uh, there was there was there was an, a question about those the grants. Um, they're actually uh, programs, so that they're not really grants. Um, the other question was. Uh, let me look through my notes. Um, I think with regard to uh, how much uh, money you asked about the Norwegian escape, I think. Um, I think that those, those things, you know, are getting really done. Details, I can get those for you. I'll give you an undertaking. We'll get that for you um, in due course. Um, the air capacity uh, projections, uh, down 4%. Um, I think that the shadow minister will know that uh, the American Airlines flight, uh, they withdrew one, um, one of their flights, uh, one of the daily flights, so that the, the capacity we're projecting uh, will be down. Um, so that's, that's the um, answer to that question. And I will get, the, I will get those other, other um, information to you with regard to the, to the individual um, cruise line um, questions that were asked. Um, income and fees for $8.1 million uh, will go to the BTA. Um, the integrated marketing partnerships, they're still occurring in 2019. Okay. Uh, with several partners, which include digital marketing, prints, events, um, and email marketing as well. Um, you had asked about the beach economy. We all know that um, there, was, um, uh, there was a lot of fanfare over Rochelle Bay Beach. Um, we, we will look at, at continuing to do something on our beaches uh, with consultation with the, with the, um, um, the, um, the president of the Bible Belt, Mr. Burgess the MP, the Honorable Member, and his colleagues. So we'll, we'll do that as, as we move forward. It's certainly um, something that um, I cherish. When I think we all remember when Thomas, uh, Mr. Thomas, wanted to open up a, a, um, a concession at Long Bay Beach and work. I mean, I thought we were well on our way, but of course that was shut down by uh, the environmentalists and, and, and a few other groups. Um, I think that that is an untapped market because, as, as the, you know, many of us will know, Horseshoe Beach is, is, is just super crowded during the season. Yeah. And if we could start filtering, and I think the, the, the plan of us starting to try and filter our tourists around the island on some of our other beaches, uh, we're going to put some emphasis on that going forward. Okay. But I think something like Long Bay Beach would, would certainly help with the, with the um, crowds that we currently experience at, um, at Obo Beach. Uh, the rotation program uh, within the BTA, yes, is ongoing. Okay. Um, you had asked about the Bermuda Hospitality Institute and the 400,000. Um, you, you may not know this, but uh, what we've done is brought that back under uh, the Tourism Authority. Okay. Uh, and I think uh, Carla Lacey is the original. She was there from the um, when we started the um, Hospitality Institute way back when. And um, so she's very familiar with it. She was a, she was a sort of person that headed it back then. Uh, she's going to work with uh, the current um, board that were over at the BHI. And uh, so we'll have some more news about that in the future. But that's what that is. Okay. Uh, we'll actually, I, th I think, um, I'm optimistic that we will, will hopefully we'll save uh, in terms of budgeting, maybe between fifty and a hundred thousand dollars, which will be poured into uh, the training of our uh, people that want to go into the industry. Certified waiter. Yeah, I'm just just looking. Give me a second, if you don't mind, Mr. Chairman, just to look through some of my notes. Um, the Honorable Member uh, Dunkley asked about the triathlon and how that money will be spent. It will be through organizing uh, the continued marketing and anything it is anything to do with the triathlon. Um, I mean, I can and, and certainly as uh, parliamentary questions will be one if he wants to delve down into the weeds. But we, you know, I don't mind supplying that information uh, if if. If, if he so wishes to go down that deep. But I think that the Honorable Member is quite aware um, that the World Triathlon Series is not 
um, you know, it's not a small event. It's a huge event, uh, which will uh, require a lot of organizational skills and, and professionalism to make sure that it comes off correctly. Uh, Honorable Member Dunkley also asked about, you know, what's it, is there any news on new hotel development? Um, not really. Uh, you know, we're talking to some people about um, possible development on the island. One thing we don't want to do is make the mistake of, you know, jumping in, in a backhoe and uh, having a big press conference and then they come to naught. Uh, we've seen that in the last couple of years. So we want to try to avoid that if we can. It's good press. It might get some people interested in the island. Yeah. But, of course, if it, doesn't, um, if it doesn't come to fruition, then it just leaves a, it leaves a little bit of an empty space. Um, the Honorable Member Dunkley also asked about Morgan's Point. Um, he might be well aware that Morgan's Point were actually in, the, uh, in default of, of their, um, yes, during his tenure as, as the Premier. So he would certainly know that um, that, that loan was in default and um, work, is, work is being uh, undertaken at the moment to see if we can do something Nothing about do that. Enough. And that will, that will as, the, as we work through that, um, I can assure you that this government will inform the people of Bermuda where things stand with regard to that development. Unlike the former government, you would have thought that if the loan was in default that they would have let the people of the country know. We had to find that out after we won the election, which, which was a little bit sad, to be honest. I think that's about it for now, Mr. Chairman. With um, just under three hours remaining, uh, any other member care to uh, speak? floor recognizes the Honorable Member from Constituency 19. Sorry, Mr. Chairman, my question with respect to the... Um That development event, um, let me just find it. 58010, I think. Yeah. C197, I think you asked a question in relation to, yeah. Yeah. So uh, that hasn't been answered. Any other member care to speak? Honorable member number 10, you have the floor. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, I appreciate the, uh, the answers by the minister. Um, just to remind the honorable minister that I asked questions about the cruise ship. Um, taxes that were there and the justification for them in comparison to other jurisdictions and that wasn't touched. Um, in regards to um, the triathlon, I would have thought that during the budget debate the minister would easily be able to justify uh, the two million dollars that had been spent rather than come back at a later date. Um, in regards to uh, hotel investment in Morgan's Point, I think this House knows that uh, there is a big difference between Morgan's Point and many other places in that was government land that is um, my words, annexed out on a long-term lease. So we do have um, some security there. So I asked the Honorable Minister, um, what is the progress on construction? Um, are they still undergoing construction at the place? And have they made um, any progress to uh, get some more money in to um, see the development going forward? I was surprised to hear that American airline flight has pulled back, and I asked the Honorable Minister, um, what are we doing to try to increase capacity, because decreasing capacity is a very worrying sign going forward. Mr. Chairman, $22.5 million has been given to the BTA. Uh, I asked the Honorable Minister, are there performance parameters around that? Because in addition to the $22.5 million, there's also a significant amount of money that's going to them in direct taxation. Uh, so that's one question. Second question is the Honorable Minister, when he sat on this side of the House, was very vocal about the compensation for members of the BTA. And has the Honorable Minister looked into the compensation? And I assume now that we haven't heard anything about that. He uh, believes that the compensation levels as that currently exist are fitting and appropriate. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I look forward to more answers and I'll have some more questions. Does any other member care to speak? Mem yes. Recognize thank the opposition leader? Yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I uh, just want to follow up on uh, my colleague, uh, Michael Dunkley, the honorable member. Uh, when he was speaking to the grant, I noticed in the statement, um, the budget statement um, this year, that it uh, said that the reduction in government's grant from $26 million to $22.5 million. If you look on page C18, you will see it says 6835. 
sorry, 6835 Tourism Authority Grant, 25 um, million. So I'm not sure which one is correct. Is the statement correct in saying 26 million, or is the budget? On C18, it says 22.5. Sorry, I'm looking at the actuals, 217, 18. If you look at the statement, it says it's going from 26 million. So, from so the, the actual is, was t in the budget book says 25 million. I'm wondering which one is correct. Is it the 25 million or is it the? You mean the brief? I would say we're debating. We're, we're not debating the brief. We're debating the budget book. Yeah, but there's a discrepancy in the numbers. Okay. There is a discrepancy in the numbers. It says 26 million to 22.5, page 41 of the budget statement. But if you look in on page C18, it says 25 million down to 22.5 million. So I'm just trying to find out which one is correct. Okay. Any other member? Yeah, and Mr. any other member care to speak? Yeah, Mr. S Mr. Speaker, if you see on C18 is 22 and a half million. Yeah. 25 million was for the 17-18 budget. Yes. Right. Yeah, and as I as I uh, ju just for clarification, members, um, the budget statement is just that a statement. The budget book is what we're is what we're debating. Um, and if there no, it, because if there was something that needed to be corrected, which has been done over many years, it would come in an errata, which would be uh, errata, which would be uh, inserted in the budget in the budget book. I do not see one as it relates to this yet, but so. Today we're debating um, Head 48 on C18 under course code 6835 for the actual for 27, 2018, it says 25 million. And in the minister's brief, he said due to, um, he said that there was a, um, a decrease as it related to uh, tourism, and he explained why, and it's $22.5 million dollars. So we're debating the budget book, and if you, would, if you want to put out uh, a, a question, but I want you to remind you that we are debating what's in this book right now. I did put out the question already. I was just trying yeah. to figure out which one okay. is correct. Right. Right. If the statement, if there should have been uh, a clause in the statement then to say that it shouldn't be 26, it should be 25 million. Okay. So I'm trying to figure out which one is correct. Okay. Everything else that I've heard is irrelevant. If the statement says one thing and the budget says another, we're referring to the budget, mm -hmm. trying to find out which one is right. Okay. Thank you, Honorable Member. Any other member care to speak to um, Head 48, Tourism and Transport? Honorable Member? Thank you, Mr. Constituency Chair. Constituency 19. Um, I, I just, I want to do something which, and, and I'm conscious of the fact that I'm having to look at the budget book and we have to make sure that it's lines that we're looking at, but I have to, go, have to continue with my consistency. With respect to the, the grants and contributions, yes. there's an indication on C18 yes. that we have um, for 2019 $2 dollars $2,070,000 is going to be given for the World Triathlon Series. Also, there's going to be $205,000 given to external bodies. Yes. I, what I want to find out is why is there no performance measures for these types of grants? Surely, when money is given out, there's a, there is an indication as to what value you think that you're going to get, whether it be the number of tourists that you think are going to come on the island or whether you, you, you think the amount of revenue, because later on when a statement comes out, there's going to be some reference as to whether it failed or didn't fail to say, like the, the America's Cup, you know, when we talked about it, did we get enough people here? Was it value for Monday? I'm just suggesting that performance measures need to be in these books as we go forward to make the public understand why this money was spent and so they could see for themselves whether there was value for money and whether the success of the program was achieved. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, Honorable Member. The Chairman um, opens the floor. Shadow Minister, you have the floor. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Just under page B196, and I believe this probably would go under advertising and promotion. I know that the majority of the tourism investment dollars was spent in the markets for, <coughs> sorry, New York and Boston, but it was indicated that other jurisdictions will be targeted to um, 
as a place for, as a destination for Bermuda. And one of those markets was Asia. And I'm just wondering if any of those advertising and promotion dollars are being used to target other jurisdictions outside of Boston and New York. Any other member care to address head 48? Minister? Uh, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, to, to the Honorable Opposition's question, uh, and I can see why it's getting a little confused, um, because what happened is, year before last, we had tourism and economic development together, which was 26. And so when we separated and done the, you know, and, and uh, economic development went away from the ministry, that's where you get to 25 and a half, and that's why the 26 is referred to in the budget. So I think that I think that's what it, it confused me too. So, what's so, the so, 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 no, no, the number's actually right. If you, if you, yep, that number, I looked in page 41 too. That number's actually, it was 26. But what, when they had the, the, the breakup the, or the, the, the separation between economic development um, and tourism, that's what, that's what that came in. Yes. Yes, yes, that's correct. Um, American Airlines, the loss of flight. Well, the Honorable Member, I think it was uh, Honorable Member Dunkley who had asked the question. Um, the Honorable Member probably doesn't realize this, but um, let's point it out to him. We now have the airport that is not run, not owned, um, not operated by us anymore. It's operated by Skyport. And I'm sure the Honorable Member, when he was Premier, he signed off on that agreement. Um, surely he recognizes and remembers that Skyport, who, who under the agreement, who are responsible for, you know, getting airlift and approving um, uh, marketing incentives. If they don't uh, support marketing incentives to the country, quite frankly, we may lose not only American, but we may lose a few more. So, you know, when the, honorable, when the Honorable Member mentions that, I think he needs to reflect back on the agreement that he signed when he signed off our airport for the next 30 years. And I can tell you, we're having challenges right now with the, with the current airlines. And let's hope we don't lose many more because of that agreement. Mm. Uh, the Honorable Member uh, MP Atherton asked about the one employee um, that one employee is, is one person, and I think she may know who it is. It's um, Ms. Stacy Adams, and uh, she has responsibility for um, transportation, uh, which we can talk about more on Friday, but uh, uh, with regard to uh, TCD Marine and Ports and the Department of Transportation, as well as our cruise, our cruise lines. Um, the Honorable Member Dunkley also wanted some more uh, explanation with regard to the triathlon. Um, again, that, that triathlon was, was, um, was um, engaged on, whilst the, the OBA were uh, the government. And just to give a further breakdown, I, I mean, I can give you breakdowns out of the yin-yang, but let's give a few more. The grandstands, the coursework, the barriers, the event execution, TV coverage, management, licensing, marketing. I mean, you know, I, I can give you that number. I mean, you know, certainly you know, MP, um, you know. So if you want any more than that in any specific details, I would suggest that you ask a parliamentary question to get, if you wish, more specifics. And certainly um, with regard to uh, MP Dunkley's comment with regard to the 22 and a half million, he asked, I think he was asking, and he can correct me if I'm wrong, but I think he was asking for a further breakdown of the 22 and a half million. Well, certainly they were government not long ago when it was 25 million. Uh, th you know, if anything at all, what, we, what we've done is reduce that. So certainly he must be aware of how some of that money is spent, if not all of it.
uh, performance measures. It's the same process that the OBA had when you ask for the performance measures of, of some of the BTA and, and their staff. Um, those annual objectives are set by the board, and the board monitors, and they, they, they act accordingly depending on um, how, they, how, the, um, how the employees perform throughout the year. Thank you, Minister. Any other member care to speak? Thank you. Honorable member from constituency number 10, you have the floor. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'm, I'm incredulous. I stand here this morning and I hear the minister endeavor to give answers about budgets that are allocated in this house for a budget debate and somewhat reticent about giving numbers and his, his go-to phrase all the time was, they should know they were the government before. But wait a second, Mr. Speaker, let me be very clear. They're not the OBA. They weren't elected to be the OBA, and they said they would do things differently than the OBA, Mr. Speaker. So to come here in a budget debate, Mr. Speaker, and to say Mr. Speaker, and to say that you, they should know what the numbers were, I'm getting to the point, Mr. Speaker. Honorable Member, stay, stay focused on the stay focused on the budget, no, Mr. No, Speaker. You're, 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 you're drifting a bit. As, well, as, Mr. Chairman, maybe maybe I'm learning you're, from you, you're Mr. Chairman. A bit. Well, it, we're in not, regards, I'm, not, I'm not speaking. I'm not honorable member. Have a, have, a, have, a, have, a, have a seat. I'm trying to keep this budget debate on track on numbers and not let it drift into a general debate and wide ranging while trying, and I'll be honest with you, I'm trying my best to encourage debate on a subject that is very near and dear to my heart, okay? Very near and dear to my heart. But I'm not going to allow it to become uh, what it need not to be. And since you want to go to drift, let me just drift and say this, is that tourism deserve uh, this debate to be drilling on. People should be jumping to their feet from the opposition to drill down on these um, idle numbers. So please, please don't go there because we may have to go to education sooner rather than later. Continue on, honorable member, you have the floor. Mr. Chairman, Tourism does, like any head, deserve to be drilled down. So on head, uh, number, Chairman, we're on head number 48. We are on head number speak, 48, speak. and I'm talking right now about the $2 million for the triathlon. Right. And Virginia. I think it's, it is poor performance for the minister to say just generally, just like the OBA should have done it, you know, for grandstands, for concessions, and things like that. I want to know how the spending has changed, where the spending is to go to, what reliability we have to get value for money. I support the triathlon. We support the triathlon. It's a good event. It does great for Bermuda, especially when our champion won it here last year. We hope the champion can win it again here this year. But this is a budget debate. So if the minister says we're spending it exactly like we spent in the past, I'll accept that answer, but I haven't heard that yet. Now, what's the question? Is the $2 million being spent in exactly the same way it was spent under the OBA? Okay. Now, Mr. Chairman, moving on. I'm still looking for some background information on the cruise ships, how we came to that tax level, how we decided that those increases were appropriate, how we decided to repeal the tax was appropriate, Mr. Chairman, okay. in comparison with some of our keen competition just a few hundred miles, a thousand miles to our south. Very concerned to learn that the minister is, cons is believes that there might be a potential for more flight shrinkage. Because I remember this honorable house, the honorable minister did give, did give a statement that he, that he was at this point, and these are my words, not the minister, that he was disappointed with the, work, the working relationship at the present time between all the partners involved in um, uh, attracting new flights to Bermuda, and that was the airport authority, Skyport, the ministry, and all of that. But, Mr. Speaker, in all due respect, while Skype, here's a question, while Skyport, Skyport might have some jurisdiction in attracting flights, the government still has a great deal of responsibility. And in my humble opinion, Mr. Chairman, if the government wants to use the excuse that it's somebody else's problem, not ours, that's a cop-out. The government needs to be point building order, relationships. Mr. Chairman, point of order. The chair recognizes the government whip. Yeah, the honorable member is misleading the house. Uh, and as the chairman of the airport authority who oversees Skyport and oversees the project agreement, 
under the project agreement, it is Skyport's responsibility to attract and incentivize airlift into the country. If Skyport does not do that and does not uphold the responsibility, then we, have the, then we run the risk of airlines leaving. So therefore, if the government has to budget money or spend money to incentivize airlines, that means Skyport is not, doing their, not fulfilling their responsibility. And that project agreement was signed under the administration in which the, the, former, the member that just took his seat was premier. So that's what he should know, and that's why I'm surprised that he's actually asking these questions. Because it was his administration, it was his party, and it was basically his finance minister that allowed this deal to go through in the first place. Thank you for thank you for that, uh, honourable honourable member. Um, chair recognizes the honourable member from constituency number ten. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Mr. Chairman. The honourable member could speak any time during the debate and bring up that point of order at the time. But I go back to what I was saying. If the government wants to blame Skyport for being deficient at this point in time, in that it's a cop out. Because you can't sit by and let what? something, Mr. Chairman, you cannot what? sit by. Honorable, and let honorable, honorable member, we're not going to have a, 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 a back and forth general debate. Um, I'll say this. The honorable member gave a point of order because he was in a position of no to be able to give you probably the most informed answer to the, to the question. If you could speak to the line item, uh, it will be appreciated. Mr. Chairman, I'm speaking to the same line item that the minister referred to, uh, the $60,000 to JetBlue and the fact that American Airlines are withdrawing a flight. We have to work together on this, Mr. Chairman, and it's very concerning for me to, in my words again, to see that the government might be sitting pat, back to let Skyport fail. We cannot have that happen. And so point I have order, a Mr. question Speaker, to the Mr. Honorable Chairman, Minister. Point, point, of order. point of order. The Honorable Member is misleading the House yet again. The government has put up money when they should not have had to in order to make sure that the country doesn't fail. And that means that we have to support Skyport. We are in negotiations. We are working very closely with Skyport as closely as we possibly can with a project agreement which does not allow any variations. So therefore, the money that the government has spent, we shouldn't have had to spend in the first place. And that's how we are supporting Skyport. That's how we are ensuring that they don't fail, because their failure is the country's failure, and this government will not allow the country to fail. So it is incorrect for that member to say that we are sitting back and not doing anything and allowing Skyport to fail. Honorable member, um, may I ask you not to try to um, impugn improper motives of, oh, of, 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 of the government, but just speak to... Um, and ask any questions. Oh, I'm, I'm not doing that, Mr. Okay. Chairman. I'm just asking. Now we get an answer. So I asked a question to the honorable um, member who just spoke and the minister. How much money has government put up in what the honorable member, Ms. MP Scott, referred to? How much money is put up? And he can come back and speak rather than a point of order, Mr. Chairman, because the comments from the minister were very concerning. And airlift is very critical to Bermuda. Yes. And so if the working relationship is not as strong as it should be, it's under the government's leadership to, to make that relationship strong. We believe in, in the deal that was signed. We believe it's a very proactive deal going forward. We, didn't, we don't need to get into that to debate it today. The questions come because the Honorable Minister, look, he expressed a very real concern, and I wrote it down. Let's hope we don't lose many more because of the agreement. And we need to be proactive to make sure that the minister's concerns don't become a reality. So the question is, how much money has been put up to date? And, and how does the minister believe that we can get to a better position where he has more confidence in it? So, Mr. Speaker, I, I look forward for some answers there. But before I wait for the answers on that and the cruise ships as well, returning to the BTA, I ask the honorable minister, um, and as my honorable colleague from constituency 19 did as well, ask the Honorable Minister what performance measures and standards are put in place of the BTA, and is the Minister comfortable with the remuneration for the senior executive in the BTA, bearing in mind that when he sat in another position, he was quite vehement in his comments about him. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Any other member care to uh, speak before we go to the Minister? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, getting back to the question that I asked uh, with respect to B197, the transportation planning team, having looked back into um, transport, I didn't see any reference to performance measures for that team, so I have to come back to where the head is right now, 
which is the transportation planning team, there's one individual, and what I want to find out is what what is that individual's role and what type of what type of things is that per, the individual does because my understanding is that there is some element of um, the planning for tourism and if that's the case then why aren't we able to either know that the team the team has come up with a plan or or there is something with respect to to what's happening because the head is here and then going back to um, the, the the question that we were just asking with respect to the uh, World Triathlon, as well as the grants to the external bodies. Now, I apologize if I didn't hear it, but I didn't, I didn't remember hearing where the, where the $205,000 was spent, because the bottom line is I'm assuming when grants get given to these people, there is something that we hope to get from them, and some way we will measure whether they have delivered on, on their, um, you know, the, the program. So back to my question is, if the if the transportation planning team has been doing something, what is it? Has it delivered on the plan? How soon are we going to hear about it? And how do we how do we determine that it's that we have success? Right. The chair recognizes the honorable uh, member from um, constituency number um, si number six. Honorable member, you have the floor. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, let me. Um, just say a little about the cruise ship fees. Uh, as you are aware, um, I, was, I am the chairman of the efficiency committee, and this is one of the things that we did look at. And let me just say where, we, where, where it was and where uh, we were able to encourage the BTA and the transportation um, ministry to go forward in. You would recall, at least the other members would recall, that, that a channel was dug by, at that time, a Royal Caribbean line. And they took up a loan to, or it was a cost to them. And the government of the day, that was the OBA government, uh, decided to um, put an agreement in place that locked in the passenger tax and the cabin tax for a period of time. So the government of the day could not raise any re additional revenue on the side. So what we did, we, we looked at it and said, well, this doesn't make sense. Because not only was RCL locked in as far as uh, its increase in passenger tax, NCL, which was another large, another large uh, cruise ship, uh, um, well, the, in, as far as the, um, also said, well, we're not going to be increasing our fees. You're not going to increase our fees unless RCL increases theirs. So that was RCL, NCL, and every other little small ship after that. So the first question I asked was, how much was outstanding? I think at that time it was about $6 million. I said, well, then it makes sense. Why don't we take up the loan, that is BTA, take the loan on, which they have taken on, which allows the government to increase their passenger tax. It made just common sense. So you got $6 million. This year we raised an additional 22, 22, 24 to 32, so automatically we're collecting more than we, we, we were, and allow the BTA to get a portion of the uh, passenger, um, the passenger tax, which they'll collect themselves. I think also part of the, um, because it was a passenger tax and there was also a cabin tax. So the government of the day, through good management, was able to get additional money um, that the, uh, the, uh, the former government was not able to um, even, even think about. And so that's where the additional revenue came from. And, and Mr. The, the, the Mr. Um, uh, Mr. Dallas and his and his team went down to to um, Florida and negotiated a good price uh, that we could able to get as far as um, um, room rates, uh, well, well, passenger tax, I should say. It was a little little back and forth, but at the end of the day, every other cruise ship came on board and RCL came on board with us. So that's where we are right now. Any other member care to speak? Honorable Deputy Speaker. Yeah, Mr. Chair, Chairperson, Chairman. Every line item in this budget book does not have to have a performance measure. As you, if you go through this book, you will see it. They don't have to. Thank you. Honorable Shadow Minister. Mr. Chair, <clears throat> on page B196, under the revenue summary, in last year's budget 2017, there was a line item for vacation rentals. 
and there's not one here for 2018, has that moved somewhere else? <clears throat> and then I have another question. Um, the total, out of the total budget allocation to the BTA, in 2017, 3.1 million uh, was used for product and experience development. <coughs> Excuse me. And that was for grants to entrepreneurs and other experience developers and on island events promotions and activation costs. What amount is going to be allocated this year, if any, for those things? Minister, you have the floor. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. A um, couple of things, Mr. Chairman. The triathlon, Honorable Member Dunkley asked, what are we doing differently? Are things going to be less? Are they going to be the same? They're actually going to be less this year, and I have to declare my interest. Um, I have um, Island Construction have um, provided some services for the triathlon, um, many of those free of charge, um, and some other things um, that the triathlon are doing, uh, which will be um, obviously could, there will be cost savings involved. The preparatory work, the equipment uh, is being reused. They won't have to pay duty on things that they pay duty on in the first go around. So there will be savings. So with regard to the travel loan, that's, that's where we are on that. Um, um, how are we going to measure performance? Um, the, the impact of the event, PwC actually done a report and showed that there, showed that there was 152% uh, return on investment. Um, there was a $4.4 million uh, dollar, um, uh, impact on our GDP, not counting legacy impacts. Um, there was 17, seven, almost $18 million in media exposure. So, uh, you know, the impact report will be repeated annually. So that would be for all of us to uh, see. Uh, with regard to advertising dollars, um, the focus is going to be on, I think, uh, one of the members opposite asked about, you know, what are we doing in terms of advertising. Uh, we're going to be focusing on cities like New York, Boston, Washington, Philadelphia, and Toronto. Uh, in the National Tourism Plan, you know that the, some of the nurturing cities are going to be Baltimore, Hartford, Atlanta, Chicago, Dallas, and even as far as San Francisco. Um, Honorable Member Dunkley said we have to work together with Skyport. Let me inform that honorable member and the people of this country that I've had many meetings with Skyport to date in my short time. Many meetings with, with uh, the Bermuda Airport Authority, their team. Um, we've been engaged, my team at um, uh, the ministry, we've engaged uh, the Bermuda Tourism Authority, uh, Kevin Dallas in particular, um, has spent many hours uh, meeting with Skyport and, and, and looking at ways in which we can um, uh, not only secure what we have, but increase airlift to the country. So let, let's, let's not be fooled. Um, there's a lot of work being done behind the scenes. Um, you know, I, I can't help but wonder when I get up and hear a former premier of the country, not that long ago. I can understand it was maybe a decade or two ago, maybe he's lost his memory. But for him to get up and say, you know, make comments about incentives, about losing airlines, what are we doing, are we working together, uh, you, will know, you will know, Mr. Chairman, that we, this, this country, whether it was under the OBA or the PLP, have given millions of dollars, millions of dollars for airline incentives for this country. Millions. The challenge is is that the OBA decided to get the airport away. That's the challenge. You have, you have Skyport, who we're, we're trying to work with. And more details are going to come out in the future, trust me. The people of this country are going to know what's going on. Okay, it might be a little early just yet. But we're trying. And when you get this, this government or the OBA government that have given millions of dollars in, in marketing incentives in the past, and you got a partner say, okay, I'll give you 100000 You work the rest out from there, Mr. Chairman. That's the space we're in. Now, you want to talk about that airport agreement? You want to see some of the other things. It's atrocious what's in that agreement, Mr. Chairman. It's an affront to the Bermudian people, the things we're uncovering in that agreement. And here we have an OBA government 
They said, we are the business leaders of the world, of, of Bermuda. We are the smart people. I'll tell you what, a lot of that's going to be revealed in the future too. But we're getting through it, and we'll get through it. And that information is going to come to this house. And the people of the country is going to know exactly what's in that agreement. Every time we turn around, Mr. Chairman, it's millions, not hundreds, millions of dollars, millions, that the people of this country are going to be saddled with for many years to come. The Honorable Member Dunkley asked about the remuneration for the BTA staff and said that uh, when I was in opposition, I chastised those wages and do I think they're justified? Well, you remember, because the Honorable Member does, who, who, who made that comment doesn't remember. When I chastised the wages that the, some of the executive of the BTA were getting, it was at a time when we, we produced numbers that was 15, we, that was the lowest, lowest number of vi uh, visitors we had in this country in what? 48 years, I think it was. And we, we were paying out that. Look, let me tell you something. And I said, go back to Hansard. I said, listen, someone making four or $500,000 a year don't, don't, don't faze me, you know. In my world, it's a lot of people make that money. That's, that's fine. But you got to perform. That was my problem. You had to perform, Mr. Chairman. And I'll tell the honorable member, any of the honorable members opposite, Look, $400,000, $500,000, a million dollars a year don't scare me, you know. But I'll tell you what, you better perform. You don't perform, then you make changes. If you're running a company, whether it be in Bermuda or anywhere else in the world, if you don't perform, you might find yourself out of, out of a job at that company. Now, Mr. Speaker, we talked about the cruise tax, and I thank the Honorable Member Ferbert for giving his explanation. I thought it was a very good one. But let me tell you something else I've found since I've been there. Former Finance Minister Bob Richards struck a deal with cruise lines. We're going to dredge the harbor so we can get the larger ships in. That's great. But you know what that cost, Mr. Chairman? $16 million. And we didn't want that. Or the 16 million dollars, okay? But, but, but this is our OBA government, a former finance minister. You know a deal he strikes? Okay, cruise lines, you, you, you know, we don't want anything else on our books. You pay for it. But with those cruise lines comes extra tax. So what we'll do is we'll keep all the extra tax and we'll put it towards the loan. And it's a couple of things that really bothered me when I got the information. One is we're paying like six, over 6% 6 interest on that money, number one. Number two, during the duration of that so-called loan, we couldn't raise our taxes at all until that loan was paid off. And let's give credit where credit's due. I think it was Mr. Dallas and his team that said, listen, you know what? We're paying way too much money for this. Let's look at getting it refinanced. And we did. For about 2.5% less. Or thereabouts. And guess what we could do now, Mr. Chair? We raise in the taxes. Which I outlined in my brief. That's going give to the, give the country millions of dollars in extra money this year, Mr. Mr. Chairman. So if you want to talk about some of the things, you're talking about looking under the hood. Some of the things we've found... And just those two, those, those two items alone, it's millions and millions of dollars, Mr. Chairman. I wonder what else we're going to find in due course. Now, the Honorable Member Jean Atherton wanted to get more information. I, I, I mean, I don't know if she was listening, but I'll, I'll repeat it. Uh, that one employee that she, she asked uh, about, with regard to the transportation planning, I called her name, and I must say, it's not, not often that I walk out of that office late at night, and she's still working, number one. So she certainly deserves all the praise, as well as everybody else in the ministry I've found, too, by the way. And, uh, you know, we just, we, we can't praise, praise uh, the people that work in the ministry enough. But let me just say again, um, she's involved with the development of this cruise ship 
uh, strategy, which is number one. She's, she's been very good at that. Um, she's involved with all transport, whether it be DBT, TCD, and marine and ports, uh, the ship agencies, parks, excursion companies. She, she, she gets involved with all of that. Um, and I think you asked about the performance measure, MP Atherton. Um, that is currently being reviewed at this time, as, as most departments do uh, undergo reviews. And uh, you asked, I think you asked, maybe you might hear something. you hear something on that very soon, by the way. Um, there was a question about the um, about a line item for vacation rentals. I think it was you, um, MP Scott. Um, uh, that is um, under the remit of the reg regulatory and the uh, policy section, uh, which works in conjunction with the rent commissioner, head 58020. It's in the budget book there. And I think that's it for now, Mr. Chairman. Uh. Government whip. Chair Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Chair recognizes the government whip. Uh, just want to. I just want to speak to uh, page B one nine six grants and contributions, uh, which is uh, C uh, one C eighteen, and uh, also speaking to the uh, member from constituency ten, where to give just a bit of background on where we are. Uh, the Bermuda Airport Authority, the Bermuda Tourism Authority and Skyport are all working together to create a policy which, which speaks to airline incentives. Now, the reason that this has come up is that under, for, under the past administration, they, they were giving air, money to, to airlines without, and as the, uh, the Honorable Member Atherton has asked about performance ma matrix, how do you know that you're getting value for money? How do you know that it's being spent in the right ways or most, most effective or efficiently? Under the former administration, under the former administration which uh, the former Premier Dunkley was the head of, they were just spending money and giving millions and millions of dollars to um, stakeholders in the industry without having any way of knowing whether it was, being, it was effective, efficient or effective. So now what we're doing is we're actually creating a policy which outlines the way and the and I don't remember. means... Um, yes, yes, sir. We're into the budget, not yes. you're doing a general debate. No, I'm, I'm actually I'm speaking to grants and contributions, uh, page B196. What's your question on that? Well, I'm, I'm actually providing uh, an answer to the member that asked the question to the government be, about the grants and contributions be, when it comes to the airport. Be specific. I am. Um, and I'm also speaking to um, on C18 of the budget book. So... Mm -hmm. So therefore, we're stopping. So, and so we're stopping the government from spending unnecessarily when it comes to the grants and contributions on that one. Now, also, what happens is that, uh, with, regardless of whether you whether you believe that the the airport or the project agreement was a good deal or a bad deal, the airport authority has been able to get an optimization agreement for 15 million, worth 15 million more dollars or 15 million dollars in added value to the country. So that way, this is how we are helping to save the government money. We're helping to, we're working with the um, other stakeholders, which is the, B, which is the BTA and Skyport. So <laughs> therefore, that goes also under the project agreement, under the optimization. That is where Skyport is supposed to put additional millions, supposed to put an additional couple million dollars towards airline incentives. So therefore, this is why the government should not be having to budget for airline incentives under grants and contributions, page 190B196. So hopefully that helps um, provide some background to what the, the question, Thank you. some clarity to what the, the member was asking. Thank you. What's the, any other speakers? Uh, the chair recognized the honorable member, Ms. Atherton. You have the floor. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Um, I'll be very specific so that I can yes, get an please, answer. Please do. With respect to C-118 in terms of... C-18? C C-18 yeah. with respect to the World Triathlon Series. I'm pleased that the minister told us what happened last year from PwC. What I'm trying to find out now is that 
the grant has been given, what type of increased air arrivals are we hoping will come for the triathlon, how much extra spending that we hope will be a spin-off, and also what type of potential there might be with respect to jobs for Bermudians? The Chair recognize the Honourable Minister, Mr. De Silva, you have the floor. Well, um, that's, that's an interesting question because um, one of the things um, um, I did research uh, when, I, when I took over the ministry was that I looked at some of the past um, uh, press statements, Mr. Chair, mm. uh, and um, to answer the hon Honourable Member's question, uh, former Minister Faye, I remember very clearly he stated in one of his press conferences that uh, it's the hope that uh, Bermuda uh, experiences uh, in the region of around 1,200 um, uh, visitors to the island for the triathlon um, during its, during its um, tenure. Um, I think the number came up a little short. Yeah, yearly. Yeah, 12. 1,200, yeah, 1,200 annually, yes, yeah. Um, I think the number came up a, a little bit short the first year. So uh, let's hope that with all the uh, marketing and, and all the um, effort that's being put into it, um, that we do see a significant increase in those numbers this year, which, which to answer your question, uh, we're estimating. Uh, the Chair recognize the Deputy Leader of the Opposition, Ms. Scott. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Chair, and just <clears throat> one question that I think the minister missed, and it would be <clears throat> B90, B195, under 58,000 administration. Out of the total <clears throat> budget last year, $3.1 million was granted for the product and experience development. What amount is being allocated for this year? Will it be the same amount, or will it be increased or decreased? Mm -hmm. Any further speakers? Uh, the Chair recognized the Honorable Member, Ms. Susan Jackson. You have the floor. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, my question um, would, I believe, come under Grants and Contributions um, B-196. Um, I, I personally haven't heard that much about the Events Authority um, this, during this budget debate, and I was just wondering if I might be able to get an update. What line item on B-196? Well, um, it would come under grants and contributions B-196, mm -hmm. I would suspect. But I guess one of my questions is, when the events authority does start, what line item would it fall under? And then if we could maybe get an update mm -hmm. on uh, the progress of that authority as well. Minister? Um, there was no mention of the event authority in my brief at all. Mm -hmm. um, so, I, I, you know, that's a, it's, an, it's just an issue for me. Mm -hmm. um, the, the answer to the product development, I said you asked MP Scott, um, yes, that is going to be uh, 1.3 million, which, which is additional funding that's moved on to sports tourism. The chair recognizes Ms. Scott. Thank you. Um, again, going back to um, page B195, <coughs> head 4801 administration, it was 3.1 million in, uh, unless I'm understanding, it was 3.1 million in 2017, and it's gone down to 1.2 million for this year. Why is there a Will decrease? You the, it will come under administration on B195, and so the question I had asked was, out of the total funds allocated to the BTA, 3.1 of that was allocated for the product development experience. Now it's 1.2 million, so I just want to know wh why it's gone from 3.1 to 1.2. Any further speakers? The Chair recognizes Ms. the Honorable Member, Ms. Jackson. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, again, this is under grants and contributions on B-196. Um, so does that mean that there is not an appetite, that we're not going to have a grant, um, an events authority? Minister? To have an events authority in itself, uh, not at this present time, no. Uh, will, will we, might, <laughs> might we have a separate division that concentrates on larger events? Yes. Um, with regard to the question again, MP Scott, just to clarify, um, it was 3.1 last year, so we're going to keep the 1.3, but the 
is going to be moved to concentrate on sports events and things like that. Any further speakers? There appear to be none. Minister, you have the floor. You want to wrap up? Yes, Mr. Speaker. Um, Mr. Speaker, bef before I uh, move that we, we end the debate, um, I'd just like to thank members for the contributions. Mm -hmm. And while we're here, I'd like to thank all the staff for, th for the work that they have done and continue to do. Um, I think that, you know, I've been around the block a little while now, Mr. Speaker, and that I've had the, um, the good fortune to, to, um, to serve in several ministries in my time. And, um, you know, the myth about, you know, all our government workers, and you heard in the general debate about, and you hear talk in the, in the, you know, in and around the island about our civil servants. I'll tell you what, and you, you've been there, Mr. S Mr. Chairman. Um, I don't think we praise our civil servants enough. Um, even in this house, I, I, I watch how our civil servants worked out backsides off. Mm. Um, and I don't think we give enough praise. And um, I'd just like to take this opportunity to thank them all for the hard work and what they do. And, you know, contrary to popular belief, a lot of our civil servants do take their jobs very, very seriously. They take it very seriously. And they, I've seen passion. I've seen passion in some of our civil servants that, you know, I would like to see in, 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 in the private sector, to be honest. Um, it's just astounding to me that, you know, the criticism that's put in and about our civil servants. And I find time and time and time again, uh, so many people at different levels go beyond and above. So with that, Mr. Chair, um, I, I would we'll like move to move, ahead. Mr. Yes, I would like to move Head 48 be approved. Head 48 has been approved. Are there any objections to that? They approved of me non Head 48 approved. Uh, Deputy Premier. Mr. Deputy Speaker and Chairman, I do move that we adjourn for lunch until 2 p.m. We will adjourn at 2 o'clock and we will come back and we'll uh, do education. Head C, head um, 16, 17, 18, 19, and 41. We now adjourn for lunch. <laughs>